learn today. All right, so a little different. Uh, I was not, this is somebody I was not deployed with. Yeah. <laughs> My son. <laughs> Uh, however, he's been around for two deployments. So um, normally, we we do a movie that reminds uh, the per the guest picks, and it reminds them of deployment or whatever. And I I didn't put any stipulation on what we were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And what movie did you choose? Tenant. Tenant by Cri Christopher Asian. Nolan. Oh, I better not do this. Mm. Hopefully that didn't I didn't get all of this out of the way, too. <laughs> this is the level of production you get at Platoon Hard Drive. <laughs> yes. These are all funnier than, <laughs> than you're giving them credit for. All right. So, Christopher Nolan. Uh, it was... Uh, what is the guy? It's Denzel's son. It's John Washington. Something Washington. Yeah. Uh, but it's Denzel Washington's son. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then the, uh, I mean, I guess what I can do is we'll <clears throat> just make me not be in it. <laughs> it's just the whole camera shift. The yeah, actors in this were really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Back to both of us. All right. And then we will. Yeah. The actors were awesome. I thought. Mm -hmm. And then there were very specific choices that they made. And. Uh, yeah. What's better there? I kind of want that. Okay. Just, well, I just have this up just so people can see the cast. Uh, these are, I always do this. I always have it so small. <laughs> uh, so a lot of Kenneth Branagh, uh, did Robert Pattinson? I don't know if Pattinson, I don't know if he's done anything. Uh, I mean, Batman. No, no, no. I mean, uh, with Christopher Nolan. Oh, uh, uh. but like. Uh, Himesh Patel, like he and Michael Caine, he's in Nolan movie. They're both in Nolan movies. Oh, uh, like what? Uh, Inception. Oh, yeah. I still need to watch that, too. Oh, uh, that's a good one. So Elizabeth Debicki is interesting because she's a model, hmm. but actress, too. But she is like 6'1". Yeah. Um, and, and, and Nolan puts her in heels. Yeah. For it too, so she's like, so the whole and then uh, I, I, John David, John David Washington, protagonist is his name. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that's all they give. That's the only name they give him. Uh, mouth's a little dry. So, um, and he is a short guy, hmm. and a lot of times with actors, you know how they'll they'll put them so they look yeah, at angle. least even. Right to some degree, or it, the guy's taller. Uh, and this one, though, he purposely yeah. picked a very tall uh, woman and then put her in heels to make mm -hmm. her look like elegant. Yeah, but also to tower over. Yeah. So how you uh, and jump in? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm as you're thinking of stuff. Um, but it's interesting because he changed it through his look is how he changes the dynamic. Mm -hmm. And how he takes the James Bond thriller and, and I mean, for lack of a better word, turns it in on itself, like, mm -hmm. like Tenet does. Yeah. Uh, and then, because it's like you were saying at first, and when I first saw, this is the third time I've seen it, but it's been like a year since I've seen it. Uh, I couldn't understand what anybody was saying half the time. Yeah. What'd you think of? The dialogue and everything? Yeah. Yeah, it was like at the beginning and everything, like that opening scene where they're like, um, they're uh, like breaking into this like opera house, the like Russian opera house or whatever. Yeah. And um, they're all wearing those like gas masks because they like gas out the like crowd so that they're not like 
I guess like under fire or whatever. But um, you can barely tell what they're saying because they're all like talking in like code words and everything, and they're like talking really fast in the gas mask and everything. It's like really hard to hear. And and you think you hear it, mm -hmm. and it. The only reason I knew not to turn on the subtitles and just let it go is because I had seen it. Yeah. And not that that gave me a leg up on what was going on, but I understood why they were doing it that way, that you were not supposed to be working. Yeah. You're only supposed to be working with half information at best. And how I thought it was really cool. How we were talking about this earlier, how, you know, most stories like in the beginning, you may be ahead or, or, or just with the uh, the main character, and then at some point you're ahead, and then they catch up, and then the ending generally is like you're caught up with the main character. Yeah. Everybody knows the same thing, audience and characters. And this, you didn't know until he knew, until the very end. Yeah, like you were with him and beyond and behind the narrator, behind the story the whole time. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the? the reveal or like the, I, that he was, that he's the one that started tenant. He started tenant. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. yeah. Oh. So when, did they, you, when did they reveal that? At the end. Oh, whenever he's talking about like that, they were really friends. Like they've had but for him. It's the beginning, but for, Ye the, um, yep. Protagonist is the end. And that that's, that is the uh, climax, basically, of the movie, of, of the story, yeah. into a traditional story. And then there's, you know, a follow on that reveals, oh, it helps further cement, oh, he's the one that started Tenet. Because when he was talking to, oh, what was that Indian woman's name? She was really good, too. Uh, uh, Dimple... For Kapadia, Kapadia, Priya, Priya, the weapons, the arms dealer. Yeah, Priya, Priya, the and the character's name, the actress's name was what I said. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought she was really good. But when he's in the car and he said, "Oh, I started looking at it differently," and I realized you all are working for me, mm -hmm. and you're the loose ends I got to tie up. He yeah. sent. He it's like a Terminator where he sent himself. <clears throat> He now realized what knowledge he was, uh, he was or communication. Let's say that he was getting. So, if you remember when, you know, they're like, "Well, we are we are always communicating with the future with text and everything yeah. digital." But does the future want to listen? Does the future know it's being yeah. communicated with? And then that's what his that's that reveal at the end is. Oh, I've been communicating with myself this yeah. whole time, and I didn't. I didn't. Ooh, I'm out of the screen. And I didn't know it. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, what do you think of that reveal now then? <laughs> <As you did. laughs> um, I think it's an interesting idea. Like it really like further push of like everything that is like at one time on the internet. It's like always going to be on the internet kind of idea. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. So that everything on the internet, because I mean, you guys... I mean, it's old, you know, but you guys, your generation is going to have all of that. And I mean, the, you know, really the millennials are the first ones, I guess, who just grew up with the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people in my old line of work would not, you know, they didn't want to be on any of the social media. Yeah. And, and in fact, institutionally, they basically said, uh, for some certain certain units and stuff and, and certain <clears throat> offices, they were like to get off of social media. Mm -hmm. But when you have no presence, it starts being uh, that starts drawing attention. Yeah. So it, it I, what I'm talking about is the Internet thing. It's like it's almost so much information that it's impossible to find that one thing now. Mm -hmm. You know, but anyway, so uh, where were you pick where? At, oh. <laughs> You're gonna be serenaded by my dad playing practicing saxophone. So hopefully, if they can hear it, I mean, yeah, it's true. I don't know. Here, don't say anything. Yeah, they can kind of hear it. How can you hear? I could. It's giving me a equalizer thing here. Oh. 
Oh, nice background music. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, uh, at what point do you feel like you at least understood what was really happening? Yeah, what was really happening? Probably, probably a little bit after the plane crash scene. The first one? Yeah, the the first one. Um I started to understand really what was like what their whole goal was. Oh my god, I'm still doing it again. But so far away. Yeah. Probably like three fourths into the movie I really understood that I like full I think this is the first time I understood mm. that he is the one that started Tenet. I just I did not get that. Everything else I felt like well the first time I watched it I was like what the f is going on? <laughs> like I'm like I think I get it. Yeah. And you want to get it because it's a really it's a smart movie how they yeah. do it and it's it's really really extremely well crafted storytelling because that is yeah. a lot of stuff to keep track of. Uh I mean and then the acting was great. I loved it and it looks beautiful. Yeah. Uh, like even if I don't like Interstellar, I didn't think all that much of, but I still like Christopher Nolan. Did you ever see that mm-hmm. with uh, uh, it's not like sci-fi? It's about like space. And- yeah, yeah, his daughter and stuff. It's a really it's a touching movie, but this one's way better. Mm-hmm. Um, the second time I was like, okay, I know what's, and then I'm like, oh wow, I just saw three or four more things that I did not. Yeah. Uh, that it it was his son. I thought they were just friends. And then that's when it was like, wait, are they related? And then I went online and looked at, and it's a, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the theories. What do you think of the movie uh, overall? It was good. It was, yeah, I. I feel like I agree with what you were saying. Like it was good and I wanted to understand it more than I really did. Like like I understood it, but it was really like until you some of the things that you told me, it, my knowledge was still like really yeah. iffy. Yeah. Well, I I mean the the reason that I know it is a mixture of having two extra times to have seen it yeah. uh, but also i did once i was like oh once i realized how much i didn't get is when after the second watching it the second time i was like i didn't understand like how i didn't i didn't quite get what half of this was going on yeah the whole when she gets shot that whole and then people are there's like four different kind of timelines going yeah. on or temporal, temporal. What uh, they call it? It's like something with a P. It's like oh, t- temporal pincer. pincer so, did you understand? Did you know? But yeah, uh, there's like the current and like the inverse, and they're both happening at the same time. Yeah, and then the pincer is to you basically yeah. kind of surround it. Once you like get to the same point, then it like and, becomes the same. Which is what they were doing with the bomb at the yeah. end. Yeah. And uh, uh, which still took. I mean, so think about how often then that his, the son, Maximilian, Neil, I thought that was kind of a stretch, but the Maximilian, Neil, yeah. but only Neil. Yeah, and then you turn it around. That was, that felt a mm. little, uh, but the ending the, in Florence, the, the Sator. Yeah, that was cool. Everybody was named after all that and then Tenet. That was super yeah. cool. What was the? It was Seder, Tenet, and what was the other one? Because it wasn't Neil. It was no, like, but it was somebody's name. It was a character's name. I, uh, I feel like it was the name of, of like a company. It's like it started with an A, like Arius or Ares or something. Tenet Block. Or stone or something. Yeah. Seder Square. Oh, opera. Oh, so, like the opera. Yeah. A rep, a repo. 
was the person she had the affair with, the art dealer oh. she had the affair with. I did not catch that until this one. And then opera. And then what is Ro Rotas? Rot that was probably a character's name, I'm sure. Yeah. Then. There was so they much have it going on. It's, it was hard to follow. Yeah. I wonder if that Sator. Yeah, wow, that's uh actually let's here. People probably don't want to see us like <gasps> staring <laughs> at it. <laughs> There's one thing I've learned in my many days of podcasting. If you have seen the movie, you'll recognize all the names. If you were super into the movie like I was, uh then you've probably seen this, but I for, I did kind of forget that it was Tenant Opera Arepo, the Arepo art dealer, Arepo. Arepo, yeah. Yeah. Who she had an affair with. Who to she get had that. to get the fake Goya. Mm -hmm. The Goya drawing. Which then he held over her. Yeah. Because that would be her career. Right? Was, oh, yeah. Because she like authenticated this because she authenticated it yeah she, like, i guess she like falsely authenticated it right in, in a in an attempt to like sell to it, get for it more money to get it at, well to get it him to get it sator oh and then be like ah this is a fraud and embarrass him oh but instead of ever selling it he just kept it. he just kept it and then and ate the nine million basically and just kept it as leverage over her yeah like blackmail which is really screwed up but obviously, yeah. I, guess. I mean, not it's not that bad compared to some of the other things he does in the movie, honestly. Man, he does. He is pretty evil, especially yeah. to her. Like wanting to end the entire world because right. wanting to end the entire world just to make himself seem like as powerful as God. And I wonder what that stone is then i wonder if it's like a god's like a roman god yeah i think it was like yeah i'm not sure yeah that there's a lot of god complex yeah uh and it was interesting um the godfather paradox that yeah. they were talking about earlier in the movie because the whole thing it's like the future is trying to wage war on the present which is like just stupid because like it's like if you kill your grandfather Will you have ever been alive to do it? It, and that's the which is the whole premise of the whole that riddle or, or not riddle yeah. paradox is the whole that's the movie. Yeah, would you be alive? And so, because I mean, they kind of allude to it, like when once you see it a couple more times or if you you know whatever if, if once you see it, i think twice you <clears throat> the dialogue you do pick up along the way that you're like oh okay because now i'm i know these these facts are coming and so mm -hmm. part of that is how christopher nolan is saying to the audience no the movie is communicating with you are you listening yeah you know and just like the future is being communicated to yeah. is the future listening it's such a cool concept and and you know i mean trippy but yeah. I, but you know what i mean but it is kind of this larger philosophical thing and so protagonist then is there there to rehide what do you think of he's there to rehide the different algorithm pieces is that his and then and then kills everybody else well what they wanted to do was because it was something they kept talk that woman priya kept talking about oppenheimer how yeah. he like always regretted it after making the atom, atom bomb like the manhattan project he like regretted it for the rest of his life but um and she was saying how that same scientist who made all this like inverse stuff, like all the like time control stuff, uh, like re like for the entire time of her life, rest of her life, like regret it, and she killed herself for it. Like she hid, she hid all the different nine pieces of the algorithm, and then killed herself so that no one would find it. And then they found it, but like they found it again, 
yeah, Seder found it, and what they were trying to do is hide it again, and then they so that and then they all kill themselves so that different versions of themselves and everything. So, oh, uh -huh. I didn't that last part. I didn't pick up on. Yeah, that's why they killed themselves so that. Oh. So that they they would never be able to find it. Too. Oh, I didn't. I didn't really. But that's how they were doing it. But everybody was dying, really, until the... But that was also the ending. They're like, well, whenever you decide to kill yourself, is that's your business. Yeah. Uh, I did like the... And he goes, but if I find you, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And he goes, but you won't be looking very hard? No, I will be. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was just giving them some time to, like, mm -hmm. tap any loose ends or, like, that kind of stuff before they... Before they die, basically. Yeah. What a cool... What do you think overall? It was it was a good movie. I mean, something that I also noticed, like about the dialogue, like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. and, like the whole partial information thing, like um, you couldn't understand barely any of the dialogue or what was going on towards the beginning, but they started to make like um, like that thing you were talking about about like um, like there's information that you're being told. Like you just need to look for it, basically. Yeah. Like there were certain parts of the dialogue, like the whole grandfather paradox and everything where it was like most of the dialogue was pretty hard to understand but then they made certain parts like very clear and they like talked slowly compared to the rest of the movie when they were like under pressure and they're like talking fast and like about all these things it's hard like like hard to understand and they would put like when uh protagonist the main guy uh was like behind was watching from behind that glass you're hearing it as if it's really behind the glass. Like yeah. in most movies, they would have they would have the audio, so you would hear it clearly. But that's yeah. he was making it. And but did you get what the gold bar was? What that gold bar did? How he how he he did the uh, oh, it was like inverse. Yeah, the inverse picked it up, and then he but he hit the guy. But but the guy yeah. who got it. Do you know what that? I don't know. I think it was just that's getting... what tipped him off about uh, the cargo, the airplane stuff, the airplane hangar. That's how he got tipped off. That's how Seder knew. Uh, so that's how Seder knew to go back in time to 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 there. Oh, to and, stop them to get the drawing before they blow it up because all the metal was inverted. Yeah, but before it wouldn't be. That like, oh. Know. And remember, remember how the key broke on them when they were doing that and they were holding their breath. And that was the metal from that was inverted metal that they didn't realize. And the uh, key broke. And he's like, what? How did that just? Oh. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I just noticed that. But there's little, little things like yeah, that. Like the woman diving off the boat. Yeah. But it was really like the future her. Yeah. After she kills Seder and then she. Gosh, that was, they used a heavy dummy. That looked pretty real. Yeah. <laughs> when they pushed him off the boat. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, oh, and then also like how we were talking about the, I keep bringing back this grandfather paradox, but no? he was talking Go about ahead. how like um, uh, protagonist, the protagonist, um, he mentioned like, so if it, if that really is true, the grandfather paradox, Mm -hmm. How, like, if you kill your grandfather, are you ever alive to do it? Like, um, if the future does win this war and they kill everyone in the past, then how would everything right now be happening? Right. Like, the entire movie, like, nothing would have. Nothing would have. Like, it never existed. And they kept saying ignorance is ammunition. Uh, and at first, I thought it was like, the less you know, the the less you're gonna want to go get. Like it's you know, like uh, the ring, you know, in uh, Lord of the Rings or something, where it's like the more they know, they want to go after it. Yeah. But it's not that. It's the less you know. The less you know allowed him, because he didn't know anything. Everybody else got. Everybody else was already caught up. Mm -hmm. He didn't know anything, but he couldn't know. Yeah. For it to succeed, 
And so it didn't matter. That's what was so cool about that at Neil or the son sacrificing himself over and over uh, to save humanity when his dad was trying yeah. to kill it. Man, it was really, it was an opera. It was an opera. I wonder, oh, I wonder if he, as an opera, you know, if you, like, if you listen to an opera in a foreign language, you know, if you've seen it enough times, you you know what the story is and you're watching it and you're just taking in the music and, and, and everything. And even though you, you're not understanding all the Spanish or all the Italian or whatever, you're, you're contextually kind of getting it anyway. I wonder, I wonder if that's how he wanted the, the vibe of the movie to sort of be too. It's almost like you're watching a foreign language and then the accents yeah. and then they put the accents in masks. Yeah. And it was like, oh, jeez, Like that British guy, that like commander. The it commando, was... commando. Commando. Yeah. It looks weird if I'm the only one wearing sunglasses. Yeah, it did, like you're trying to be too cool. <laughs> too cool for school. Uh, yeah, the commando. But he knew that was the pro that that was his. Everybody had to know but him, and nobody could tell him. Mm -hmm. He had to figure it all out. Because if he did know, then he would have done it, like certain things differently, and then Tenet would have yes. been. Yeah. Tenet never would have happened. Yeah. Just like um, oh my God. whenever the, it was the airplane crash, and then he was like, oh, I took care of the guy. Because he like pulled his mask off of him, and then they both like saw each other and realized. And then he just walked away and handed him back his mask. Did and he and whenever he was about the um protagonist was about to kill the version of him, the inverse version of himself, but um and the guy just made up that random reason for him not to yeah. kill himself. Yeah, but he didn't tell himself that it was it was because it was really it yeah, was it's you yeah because yeah. that would then throw off everything. God, I can't believe how good a storytelling yeah it, it was. was. Just to think of that and to keep it. I mean, when you're writing something like that, it's not like if we wrote a screenplay. You, you know, it you have a whole ton of people. Yeah. And people are helping you keep track and helping you fill story. Like, okay, how did we now let's where is this? Like probably had one or two people like keeping track of each storyline. Like, okay, where exactly is it? Just as they're as they're brainstorming, because I'm sure he yeah. was like working it. Man, those on location scenes were gorgeous. There was not, uh, I mean, the, when there was green screen, it wasn't bad, mm -hmm. but like they shot and moved. They got B roll in Mumbai. Yeah, that was cool. That was really when they went up. Oh man, when they would you do that? Launch yourself? No. Up with, no, you wouldn't even try it? Because if it goes wrong, like, let's say, okay, let's say you're, like, harnessed in, and you're, like, lying, and then you're, like, you're, like, going up, and you have to, like, push off the building or something. Let's say you're going, and then you, like, clip your foot on, like, the building, and then you just, like, go straight, like, your face into the brick wall. Like, that would Oh, hurt. I mean, what if you get hit by a car tomorrow? You could just say you're scared. Oh. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not that I'm scared. It's the possibility. No, I know. I'm kidding. Well, it's being that's brave is not the absence of fear. It's getting past the fear. Yeah. You yeah. would have it. It is extremely reasonable to have a fear of that. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? Like, no. would you do it? Yes. Well, if it was like if they had so a ton of people have done it and they haven't and they were like completely fine. Then I probably would. No, it probably I, depends how tall the building was. I would do it. I um, but that said, you also like the things you've done, like jumping off helicopters and like all this stuff. Like that's that helps because yeah. I've passed. I got past a lot of. But you know yeah. what still gets me uh, is rock climb. Not in the gym, but like we did. I mean, this is so well, now. It's probably twenty years ago, fifteen years ago, but. We did this rock climbing and Bridgeport Mountain Warfare. God, yeah. The, oh my God, that was so long ago. I was still in the Marines then. Uh, mm -hmm. This is one of the last times I, I think I did had to do this. But we're climbing the rock face, and you're on a belay, 
but you know that's the only time i would get scared like like yeah. like frozen like really really like have to push it like the only reason i'm not i'm not giving up is cuz i don't want to be that dude yeah <laughs> a bunch of re- around a bunch of recon dudes <laughs> you know, like I didn't want to be that dude, and that's—I'm not gonna lie. That peer, peer pressure—it was a motivating factor because I was scared. Jumping out of an airplane or something like that, or 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 repelling doesn't never really gave me that repelling kind of, you know, because you're backwards. Mm-hmm. And once you have that first, you're standing like this, and you you want to sit, and so you yeah. do that, but that sit would, into it while you're. Off. yeah but on that first on that very first you know you have to like you have to go straight like that you have to kind of go down you know you have yeah, to be like, oh. flat because if you go because what you want to do is you want to bend your knees and sit that's like your feel your inclination but that slams you up against the like the rock like face so the repelling and rock climbing <laughs> episode yeah. i would do it though i would try it but i'm also um, also, like, just for the record, I'm not afraid of rock climbing. <laughs> <sighs> My son's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, uh, any... We, we're going to go to the questions. But any final thoughts, kind of general, overall? Um, Not really. I feel like I've already, like, said everything. Yeah. It, it's a fun movie to talk about and think mm-hmm. about. Would you watch it again? Definitely. Yeah. I feel like I kind of like I, I want to just to understand it more. Yeah. You know? Um I think we may have it rented still. But yeah, I would watch it again too. But I love it. Oh, the other thing we didn't talk about though is how it took the whole spy genre and and deconstructed it. Mm-hmm. Like basically like we were talking about with the dialogue, but we didn't talk about it in in terms of this, but with the uh, uh, the dialogue, it's basically saying, hey, you're familiar with this spy genre. Just like, if, again, if you're going to an opera and you're familiar with the story, but you're not familiar with, you know, the Italian or whatever, but you get yeah. the story. And so he, and I guess we did kind of talk about this, but how it's saying, <clears throat> but it, the way he deconstructs it all, saying, hey, you don't need this crazy dialogue and all of this stuff. But there are certain what they call tropes, like dressed, dressed to, you know, yeah. to the nines. Is that what it? Yeah. Dressed to the nines and all that. How he was of. talking about, like, um, like if you are going to go talk to this billionaire, you might want something better than Brooks Brothers. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, oh, I think. Brooks. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> what I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I thought that was, like, a pretty nice suit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there was a lot of and and he was so confident mm-hmm. the whole time. He gave you he gave you confidence in, in what himself. Yeah. But now that I think about it, which character Okay, so actually I should tell you. <clears throat> the way these questions work is uh once you use a character, once you pick a character for a question, can't use it again. Can't use it again except for this very first question. This one doesn't count. Whatever, Whoever you pick for this, is you can use again. Okay. <clears throat> what character... You're fine. You want a water? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what character would... Uh, what character do you associate yourself with the most? I don't want to be that guy and say protagonist, but... Um... You can. I don't. I don't. I feel like I don't really associate myself with anyone. It was like, you know how sometimes you have dreams where you're like in the dream, and then sometimes you have dreams where it's like you're watching a movie, like you're watching it all happen. Like even though I don't know, <laughs> like the movie felt very like immersive and everything, and I felt like I was like like I didn't understand everything, like kind of like him, but. I never really felt like I was like, like associated myself with someone. Like connected to it. Yeah, like really connected. You're you're an outside observer. Yeah. Watching, watching it unfold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, which character do you think 
people would pick for you. For me? Yeah, like if someone's like, which character was most like Connor? Do you think? Maybe... Maybe like Neil. I would... I mean, I'm your... Well, I guess he's not his son. Technically his yeah. son anyway, but... I would say Neil. I, uh, but you're not as... Because protagonist almost airs on a little cocky. Yeah. A little arrogant. That's not... Like overly yeah. confident. It's the capable. Everybody likes somebody who's capable. Yeah. But I think I think that Neil... Uh, I, the funny thing is, I, maybe, maybe it's not, but I would say the same thing. I, and, and I would say Neil for me too, but I've also understand that kind of work in a way. Yeah. Not that obviously, but <laughs> yeah, not like, crushing <laughs> yeah. and like but saving I, the entire world. But when you're not the lead, cause when, when you're always support, cause I wasn't like, you know, a Navy SEAL shooter guy. And so I'm, you're always the support guy to them. Mm -hmm. And you have to be okay that you're not the, the protagonist, the action figure. <laughs> you yeah. know, they do the make action figure about. Okay. So for these ones now, uh, you can only pick one or pick one. Okay. Once you use it, you can't use it again. Can't so Neil is used. No, no, no. You're good. Oh. This is all clean slate. I'm saying from now, from now on. For that question, just pick whoever. Because it's just an interesting question, I think. Yeah. Like, how do you see yourself and how do you think others see you is basically kind of what that question mm -hmm. is hiding a bit in there. Um, uh, okay. Which character... This is going to be hard because i got to tailor it for you. Because normally, <clears throat> it's which character would you go on... Uh, Deployment with. A what? Deployment with. Uh, well, yeah, I'll have to change that, but, uh, a road trip. Let's just start with uh -oh. a uh, four day road trip. Like you're in the, you got to share a hotel room, three nights hotel. Uh, I mean, pretend you can drive hypothetical. I mean, I can't, I think I've played yeah. enough Forza Horizon five. on right. the Xbox. <laughs> oh, I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just played um, a ton of call of duty myself. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> right stick to go forward. Yes. Right. <laughs> Um, probably, probably Niels because, well, I'm, I Niels in this situation. Or, or no, Neil, you're, you are Neil, you. I mean, this is uh, now these characters are, are inhabiting our, our real war, world. Yeah. And so you got to take a road trip with one of them. Which would you choose? So I feel like protagonist would be really interesting, like, to like to talk to and everything but like spending that much time with him i feel like he's like such a serious guy in the movie like Man. i could not like, and and you're basically in the and in the road trips scenario am i too far out of camera or are you getting knocked uh uh in the road trip scenario you're with that person basically yeah 24 hours a day sharing the hotel protagonist would be that would yeah. too much um probably the english guy michael kane the billionaire that's who you would do the road trip with because he has so much money you can get a nice hotel Ooh, no i don't want to use him yet because that uh well no i have to change the next one who would i want to listen i to? forgot how many characters there are i know right uh it, for me probably either neil's or um, what was the guy who got them the plane to crash? I uh, Patel. Uh, well, I forget his name, but Patel. Patel That's is his, the name. actor's last name. I forget what he was in the in the movie. Uh, but yeah, he's a good choice. He's a Be good choice because so I feel like they can both like like they don't have to be serious all the time. Like they can take a joke kind of person. Okay, so which one are you choosing? Um, I feel like because we didn't really see so much of Patel, like we didn't, like we didn't really get to know him as a character too much. I'll probably say Neil's or Neil. Neil. Okay. Who would I choose? 
Um, I'm going. I'm sticking with the billionaire. Okay. Who? Oh, actually, it's we unfair. Didn't, we didn't really get to know him either, though. Really? Yeah, but just a, like you know, we if you know. sort of project, imagine what he would be like. But he might. So, how about this next question? Who would you go on a uh, four day or a three day ski trip, snowboard trip with? Well, I'd probably want to go with someone who's a good teacher because I've never done either of those things. So they'd probably be teaching me how. But... Mm. So. Or what? Uh, no, nah, snowboard. Yeah. Let's say ski trip kind of thing. Okay. Because that's the best. Because I, I was like, uh, if you want to go to like a basketball camp or something, but that wouldn't. Yeah. Um, because it's all about you got to hang with the person. So this is where I would choose the billionaire. Because they would pay for, he would pay for oh. the awesome, awesomeness, but uh, he wouldn't be, a, he would stay in the chalet. Like the he whole, wouldn't do it. With, he like would, he wouldn't be out on the slopes with you. Yeah. You know? Uh, but then, like, do you want to go skiing by yourself? Yeah. And then also, let's, what if money is not part of the, in the question what if it's just personality it's all personality yeah i mean it's all just a you know well fun. you just said you would go with him because he would be able to buy oh i thought he was like i liked his personality though i kind of like that there's something i like about that english snobbery kind of yeah feel there's something just sort of about it that's i don't know i mean it's how the brits have prevailed he what did he say he said you guys don't have a monopoly on uh, on snobbery snob. yeah. he goes yes but let's say we do have a controlling interest yeah <laughs> that was a great yeah line. that was funny but didn't you just chose him for both the road trip and the? i that's what i was gonna say i i can't choose him because i i chose him for the road trip uh but if you could you would i would choose the billionaire but um for the ski trip, I would say uh, the, the Patel. Uh, yeah, whatever that guy's name was. The I feel Air like he would have fun. He would, he would be. He would, he he would be, be fun, and he's yeah. and he's confident, yeah. you know, outgoing. You know, like he would be uh, able to mix with people. Yeah, you know what I mean. He wouldn't be like a a wet blanket. He'd be fun. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I'd probably do Neil's for or Neil for a road trip, and then Patel for ski. Okay. Um, it's hard it's hard because like because i was like so confused for so much of the movie i was i was not really focusing on like figuring out like learning the character's personality and everything i was just trying to f figure out what's happening like follow the plot really yeah well and that's what's interesting with the characters is you didn't have to care i don't know what they it, they didn't make you want to care or or even yeah. say you have to care about these guys you know, some movies you're like, wow, that was an underdeveloped character. You just had this person sort of hanging around. Yeah. But they weren't, they didn't really, you don't know anything about him. He's just there for like exposition. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, but this movie was saying, hey, you don't need to connect with these guys. And in either way. Yeah. You're not going to. And we're not going to give you the information to do. It. Yeah. So you, you are taking a little bit of a, a leap. Uh, yeah. Okay, which one would you work? Which one would you play on a basketball team with? Like if they were all even skill. Hmm. Like who would be a Probably good teammate? The, uh like Commando at the very end of the movie who's like explaining the um the plan and everything. Because I feel like like he'd like take initiative for things and he'd like um I don't know. I feel like that's the kind of guy that would kind of be like running the court. Kind of. Yeah. I think he'd be a good teammate. He'd be a good teammate. That'd be my choice too. Uh, I mean, what was her name? Oh, Kat. Oh, she's, she's yeah. a six one. Because she's so, so tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I, maybe I'd play, have her on the team. Maybe. Who yeah. would you work in an office with? Or be in a classroom that, with, or whatever. Let's say classroom, like that. I would probably say either the British guy or the or cat. But um, the billionaire guy, you mean? Is that who? You, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Michael. I guess they're both British. I'm pretty sure. 
<laughs> I was just making sure Neil, because Neil's British. Oh yeah, Robert more people Pattinson. in this British in this movie are British than I. Yeah. yeah, which was also sometimes making it a little more difficult, also with the different accents and everything. Yeah. Um, I would go for her, for uh, Cat. Mm-hmm. I would say her. I think she'd be. She seems. She carries herself well, but she's not. Look, she doesn't look like she's looking for attention. Like she yeah. needs to suck up to the boss kind of thing. Yeah. Like she's not a pick me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think her. I think. Well, she seems nice to talk to. You know, yeah. someone you could sit across from, chat with. Okay. You have a crush on her? Or something? Well, sounds, <laughs> I mean, sounds like it. She's kind of hot. <laughs> she's a little ultra thin, but like anorexic or something. Yeah, it looks a little. It's like too thin. It fit. It looked natural. Sort of. I mean, it didn't look like it didn't look like she was. She had a disorder, but she was very uh, thin. Yeah, uh, I thought it looked unnatural. You thought you did. Um, uh, I mean, the truth is, everybody in the movie looked good. They weren't yeah. necessarily pretty, but they were cinematic. Yeah, you know, everybody's face. Kenneth Branagh's a, a Shakespearean, you know, trained actor. And who's that? Uh, uh, Seder. Mm. And you had all these big act. Good. Yeah, you had all these really good actors in it. Yeah, and so each character was cool to look at. He, visually. I feel like he portrayed the emotion that he was like scripted to have like very well, like the anger <laughs> towards like Cat and everything. Yeah, he did. Like you could feel it. Yeah, it felt real. Mm-hmm. It like you're scared for her. Truthfully, yeah, honestly. you're you're you're, like, you're kind of scared for her. And it's it's strange because you know it's a movie. Yeah, that was one. That's yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that actually because that was the thing I connect. I that's how, but that's how good that acting was. Yeah, like you legitimately feel like God. Somebody. Stop this. Yeah. Like whenever, <laughs> like whenever he walks into the room where she's reading, and then you could tell that she got scared. Yeah. Whenever he walked in, like so boldly and everything. And then he like he like wrapped his belt around his hand, like it really... Oh, and then put the cufflinks in. Yeah. Mm. Uh okay. Yeah, that was brutal. And then they also um whenever she was like kind of cowering on the floor and he was like yelling at her that, like, that like, was from her from his chest and everything. Like, yeah. Like, but that's then, really where I was. Like, I was nervous for what was about because I couldn't remember with the belt. I couldn't remember what happened exactly, and so I was I I was nervous for her. But in the when they when you know when they had the all the weapons out on the table and everything, mm-hmm. and he and then he like kicked her, mm-hmm. like and then they had that. That's like when that. I was like, I could feel viscerally like. Mm-hmm. Somebody stop this. Why is nobody yeah. stopping? This? Like in your stomach. Yeah. Like and you and feel then, you want to protect her. And they had that camera angle looking up at him to make him seem like. Yeah. Yeah. There her her height was no longer her power. Yeah. Had, you know, a, a physical power. She's on the floor. She's extremely vulnerable. And you're seen up, which she doesn't she never has to look up at anybody. Yeah. Uh, like she lost her like elegance. Yeah, kind of yeah. Her, like power. Okay. Final question. Uh, you're on a deserted island. You get one movie to to choose to choose from. Top Gun. Let's say Maverick, because you really like Maverick better, right? I don't know actually. Uh, okay, we'll just say Top Gun. We'll go with the regular how the podcast goes. Uh, Top Gun. Or Tenet. You got to this movie. Or let's. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do it. Th- let's say it this way. <laughs> it's so funny. I always, always. Even with Kevin. We've done a whole bunch of these episodes. And I always forget at the end how the movie. Like a, like you only get one movie to take with you. But sometimes. Other times it's like. Okay. You can only take one more movie. Mm. So let's say that. You can only take one more movie. What, what am I. What's the first thing I'm bringing already? Uh, but don't worry about that. But the point is, you don't have to watch whatever movie you're about to pick, Top Gun or Tenant. You, you don't have to watch that for six months, but you are going to have to watch it a lot because yeah. you only have, say, 10 movies. 
Right. Okay. And the other ones, whatever in this hypothetical situation, the other nine movies are locked in. Mm-hmm. And so you can only choose one. So it's one you're going to have to watch a bunch of times. Uh, say you're trapped on the island with five of your friends. So you're going to have to watch this movie with your friends a whole bunch of times. Yeah. Which one would you pick? That's hard because they're so different. I know. Like Top Gun is like a like a cult classic. And it's like such a good movie. But Tenet is something that I already want to watch multiple times just to understand it. But then I feel like it's so if, heavy. Yeah. Like after I after I watch it, let's say like ten or twelve times, I will like completely understand the movie. And then because I've already watched it so many times in the past, then yeah. Uh, but Top then, Gun doesn't matter. I mean, Top Gun tells you what it is right from the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> because and it's awesome. Yeah. Then I might choose Tiny because then it'll probably take me that many times to like completely understand the plot that much, and then I can just like watch it just like just as a movie, and then I'll like understand it and everything. Are you thinking about you have to watch each one of these with your friends? So it's not just you. Depends which of my friends I'm bringing. Like, like if let's say that say your best I'm friends. Talking. You don't have to tell me who they are. In that case, if they're watching, they're they're, they don't feel bad. <laughs> you hear me, Kassan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But the whole point is, so like, what we do is we say, "What did you take on deployment?" Mm. And because we automatically know what that sort of situation is, so I'm I. I don't mean to keep adding on to it. It just, yeah, I have to break down this. So you have to watch these with your friends. It can be your best friends because normally you deploy with, I mean, you deploy with a mix usually, but yeah, you know, you're very close to, to pretty much everybody. Probably like people are going to be like mad if you put tenant on some, you know, like that kind of after a while. Yeah. Does that, do you, um, does that change your answer at all? Well, yeah, kind of like, like if it's like a movie that you watch on like a like a big like group like movie night kind of thing. Yeah, that's hard because like Tenant, I feel like like what I was saying before, like it's gonna take me quite a quite a few times to like fully understand the plot as much as I understand Top Gun, but and then I can just enjoy it as a movie. But, yeah. But then it'll it's not like a fun movie, like. Yeah. Like it's a good movie, but it's not like a. No, it's heavy. Like a, yeah, and you got to think, especially the first couple of times, you really are. Yeah, you got to pay attention to it. It's it's pretty much forcing you to pay attention, uh, and it can be. Here's one that I. This is difficult. I'm good, but I'm gonna go with Tenet, too. I think for same, yeah. kind of the same reasons you're saying. Another reason uh, is it's longer than Top Gun. Mm-hmm. So it kind of kills a little bit more time, probably an hour, extra hour, which I know doesn't sound like, but, but when you're both <laughs> your yeah. and you're like sitting in these tents or whatever, you know, killing three hours versus an hour and a half yeah, uh, is kind of nice. But say you're just waiting on uh, the brief or whatever, and you're just hanging out, you know, you don't have a ton of time. You can just throw Top Gun on. Yeah. Anywhere. And and just watch, you know, and you get to watch the whole thing or you watch 10 minutes of it, you know, you're you're fine. But I'm gonna go with Tenet too. Plus, it would give you something to think about after the movie. Yeah. Top gun I love, but it's like it's like ice cream. I love ice cream, but yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna have it every single night. Yeah. And it just doesn't give the you don't think about top gun, you know. As much yeah. as you think about, ten, as much as you would think about Tenet. Like, you don't have to be as, like, with it the entire time you're watching Top Gun as much as you do with Tenet. Yeah. You know, the nice thing, too, I bet you with Tenet is you get, I don't know if you've ever watched a movie this many times, but we're, you're almost just kind of following it. Like, you know it. You, f- you know it by heart, more or less. But, and then, but because you're almost disengaged from it, you see a couple or something new from it. Yeah. Uh, this happened a couple of times on, on this podcast, you know, like, because everybody picks movies we've all seen a bunch of times. So watching a couple of them, uh, you know, you're trying to stay engaged with it because you want to talk about it and, and all that, but it's a little hard. And it's like, oh, oh, I didn't notice that. And I've seen this movie yeah. 20 times already. <laughs> but uh, 
All right. Well, that's it. Uh, that's the end of the questions. You got any final thoughts on it or so recommend you definitely recommend it. Yeah, I recommend it. Yeah, I do. Just, too. Just know, like, like Dune, you're going to have to watch it again. And Ooh. like, do you think it's better than Dune or, or even? Probably even. It also probably depends, like, if you're like watching it, like how much you like sci-fi. Like, if you like. The effects like, are cool though this pre- a lot of i mean they're wrecking those cars that's what's yeah. awesome they, those they're crunching those cars like but it is sci-fi with the time travel i'm oh, sorry yeah. eating ice on camera um all right well that's it yeah so little big man i can put your i guess i can't put your thing on now but what the thing? little name tag oh <laughs> uh kind of too late yeah, well, Connor does not have a uh, Bronze Star or an NJP. But I do have an A in Geometry. So. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a really good one. <laughs> All right. Roger, now clear to engage. Yep, engage. Smoke on. The truck.